nucleotides purines pyrimidines how are they synthesized how are they degraded and what are the common exam questions which are commonly asked about this topic let us try to look at it <clears throat> is the broadcast clear voice everything is clear for the online students very sure okay what are purines what are pyrimidines i always used to hate this question because i always used to forget it purines are a and g pure as god right pyrimidines are cytosine thymine uracil thymine is not thymine thymine is vitamin thymine thymine ha huh? cut the pie cut is cytosine uracil and uh, thymine out of all this it is the thymine which has a methyl group y for y methyl group how is uracil formed it is a cytosine if it undergoes deamination it forms the uracil is what you have to fundamentally appreciate so what is that which is found in dna and what is the counterpart which is found only in rna uracil is found in rna thymine is found in dna as all of you know very well now if you look the bonds between guanine and cytosine gc bonds guanine binds with cytosine adenine binds with thymine guanine and cytosine have got three hydrogen bonds that's the reason it is stronger and adenine and thymine have got two hydrogen bonds only that is the reason it is uh, weaker comparatively suppose if a dna is very rich very very rich in uh, guanine cytosine more hydrogen bonds need to be broken down basic inorganic chemistry you require higher melting temperature so that's a basic uh, point you need to appreciate so you have a purine you have a pyrimidine obviously what are the different inorganic atoms you are finding in this carbon is there nitrogen is there hydrogen is there etc etc so somebody should contribute their carbons nitrogens oxygens not oxygen but hydrogens in order to form purines purines form dna dna decides our brain our brain decides the world everything lies with carbon hydrogen nitrogen will decide how brainy guy you are or how dumb guy you are right so glycine glutamine aspartate n formyl tetrahydrofolate and carbon dioxide they are the building blocks of our human life our intelligence thinking and what we pass as a heritage in the form of dna to our next generation right maybe during that passage few things happen so that father is a cardiologist son could not even pass his uh, school also has a problem even with multi father is like mathematics professor son could not know what is the fifth, fifth table even though his age is 15 all problem is you should think maybe the glycine glutamate aspartate have defeated me then glutamate aspartate co2 they are the contributors for the nitrogen carbon and hydrogen if it is pyrimidine is what you have to basically remember so how, what will you remember commonly asked question in the exam gag glycine aspartate and glutamine this carbon is by the glycine this carbon is by the carbon dioxide this nitrogen in this structure of the purine is by aspartate and this tetrahydrofolate will contribute single carbon ch and glutamine is contributing nitrogen here one more glutamine nitrogen here that is how 
the purine is basically synthesized. What is a nucleoside? What is a nucleotide? Is a very common question. The base plus the sugar. It can be ribose sugar or deoxyribose sugar will become nucleoside. Whereas the base plus the deoxyribose sugar plus the phosphate which is linked with the 3 5 phosphodiester bond combined is called tide, nucleotide. ATP may kya hota? What, what, what is there in uh, ATP? Phosphates are there in ATP. No? If the phosphate is added, T is tied. That's way, that way you can remember. Now, take up an MCQ doctor. We don't want you to sleep in the class. A pentose with 5 phosphate group, 2 OH group, 1 pyrimidine group describes which structure out of these? A pentose with 5 phosphate sugar with 2 hydroxyl group and 1 pyrimidine group describes which structure? You like to call nucleoside or tide and if so, what is pyrimidine, what is purine? You must know all these things to answer this question. Give me a quick answer doctor. Yes. Give me online students also, please punch your answers. Let us make it a more interactive session. I am very happy to see. 30 plus viewers online today. Yeah, that makes my evening wonderful today. Yes, doctor. Huh? You like to say? E. e right? Cut. Yes, permitted, no? So, it should be either what? Cytosine or thymidine. A pentose with 5 phosphate group. Ah, uh, so since phosphate is there, it should be nucleotide. So that should be thymidylate or cytidylate. Between the two, this entire description is matched by the cytidylate. Only one pyrimidine group. So that makes it cytidylate. That's a point of uh, interest. Now, doctor. Because there is only um, one pyrimidine ring in this, if you go to the structure of uh, thymidylate and cytidylate, uh, you will get an idea. Now, an increase in temperature in DSDNA is all because of the high content of what? You like to say? Cg, that's right, Cg. The melting temperature of the DNA, how do you like to define? What is that basically? When we say melting temperature, what is that temperature? That defines the melting temperature. Come on, what is your answer? Half of the helical DNA is lost, that becomes the melting temperature. Now, doctor, <coughs> de novo pyrimidine and purine synthesis. See, there are two methods by which purines and pyrimidines are fundamentally synthesized. How are they? As medical student, we do two ways of preparation. One, you go to reading room, you go to library, you sit with all fresh books, read the entirety, make underline, write your own notes, and then get ready for exam. What is that called as? De novo biosynthesis. Your senior who failed for 5-6 times, like me, has left notes for you. That you read and you got gold medal. That is called salvage pathway. So in our body, whenever the DNA is broken down, the broken intermediates, from that, if you resynthesize the purines and pyrimidines, that become the salvage part. You are salvaging the degraded DNA. De novo, from the fresh scratch, you are doing like the master chef. Freshly you cook and then serve. That becomes the de novo. Two methods. 
So if you look at the purines de novo biosynthesis, that means from scratch, how are the purines are produced? They require one sugar, they require a phosphate, phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. And they add a base to that and that becomes the purine, de novo. So ribose 5-phosphate, typically phosphate ATP becomes AMP and uh, that lead to formation of 5-phosphoribosyl 1-phosphate. Therein the phosphate groups are being provided by the ATPs break down into AMP and the donated phosphates are used by the ribose 5-phosphate to form 5-phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. Then the 5-phosphoribosyl 1-pyrophosphate is acted upon by an enzyme called glutamine phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate amidotransferase. Amido means what is added to that? A nitrogenous base is added. And who is contributing that nitrogenous base? Glutamine converts to glutamate and contributes the 10H2. And that forms the 5-phosphoribosyl amine. And that in turn is converted into 5-phosphoribosyl Glycamide, where glycine contributes, we told no, GAG, there is a contribution coming from GAG, three important amino acids for the purine biosynthesis. Then 5-phosphoribosyl glycamide, the formyl transferase will convert N-formyl tetrahydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate and that formyl group will be added to it. And that forms 5 phosphoribosyl N formyl glycamide. Now, did you understand why, if there is a folate deficiency, megaloblastic anemia is there? If there is no folate, tetrahydrofolate. If there is no tetrahydrofolate, N formyl tetrahydrofolate cannot form. If it doesn't form, purine doesn't form. If purine doesn't form, DNA doesn't form. If the DNA doesn't form, only cytoplasm forms inside the RBC. Then what will happen? Megaloblastic anemia typically will result. We are getting a black screen.